special meeting of the city council was held in city council chambers on Thursday, July 25th, 2024 at six o'clock PM for the purpose of transacting on the items listed below. Notice this meeting was posted on July 23rd, 2024 at 2.48 PM. Absent were Councilor Cohen. Councilor President Hapworth presided. Committee reports. Councilor Morcillo. Thank you, President. City of Salem and City Council, July 25th, 2024. The Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs co-posted with the Committee of the Whole to whom was referred the matter of an ordinance to amend an ordinance relative to Chapter 42, Section 75A, Parking Prohibitions Tow Zone, October Resident Parking, has considered said matter and would recommend adoption as amended for first passage. On acceptance of the report, all those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. On the recommendation under discussion. Thank you, President. Um, so I'll have a lot more to say about the, the following one. This was just the October resident parking. Um, this is a narrower amendment. Uh, the ordinance is updated to reflect the new online permit system, which residents in October resident zones will need to register their car for the month. There is no charge for resident parking in the October zone, but there is a $10 charge for a visitor permit, and this was one of the amendments made. Again, visitor permits can be purchased through the app on your phone or on a computer or by calling the parking department or the Department of Transportation. The amendments made after the initial submission of the ordinance were to make the visitor passes $10 to clean up the language to reflect the new online system and to remove the $2 fee for home health care workers and business owners in these October resident only zones. Any further discussion? Seeing none, on adoption of the first passage as amended, all those in favor? Any opposed? The matter carries. Further committee reports, Councilor Morcello. Thank you, President. City of Salem and City Council, July 25th, 2024. The Committee on Ordinances, Licenses, and Legal Affairs co-posted with the Committee of the Whole to whom was referred the matter of an ordinance to amend an ordinance relative to Chapter 42, Section 75, Parking Prohibitions Tow Zone, Resident Permit Parking, has considered said matter and would recommend adoption for first passage as amended. On acceptance of the report, all those in favor? Any opposed? Report is accepted on the recommendation under discussion. Thank you, President. Last year, the City Council approved the funds to purchase a new digital system for resident parking. After years of complaints about the lack of enforcement in resident parking zones due to the time-intensive labor involved in physically walking every resident zone, zones that are spread throughout in zones that are spread throughout the city. The new system uses a license plate reader, or LPR, to check the permit status of every car parked in resident zones. The Department of Transportation submitted language for Chapter 75 of the parking ordinances reflecting the new system with the removal of language referring to the physical sticker or hand tag and referring to a permit instead. The language also created new parking zones, moving from a ward-based zone to a neighborhood-based zone. Section 75 also lists the streets that permit, that permit resident-only parking, and some changes were made to remove some of these streets, which were already approved by the City Council at a recent meeting. And finally, the fees for the permits and visitor passes were increased in the submitted ordinance amendments. We then had about seven hours of meetings over three nights. Councilors reached consensus on the new parking zones and the list of included streets. It was also pointed out by Councilor Gersolo that some of the streets in the Willows were intended to be enforced seasonally from April through October, reflecting the increased parking demands in the area from those visiting the Willows. An amendment was made to the ordinance to create a new type of resident permit to reflect the seasonal enforcement for Bayview, Beach, Columbus, Dustin, Fort Ave, Island, and Sutton Aves. We were able to discuss and help shape the policies for resident-only parking, specifically for home health care workers. We reached consensus to not charge a fee for permit for the permit for home health care workers who are among the lowest paid professionals and who must travel to their patients' homes to deliver care. We also discussed flexibility in the process for obtaining resident parking passes for home health care workers and contractors who can contact the transportation department themselves, provide information about their vehicle and where 
where they will be working and obtain a pass that way or through their companies. So in addition to being able to use off-street parking where available, utilize a visitor permit when available, there will also be a way for a home health care worker or contractor or their company to obtain a permit. This is a huge help for those residents who aren't physically able to navigate the online system. The Transportation Department will provide flexibility and work with those who need it. We also were made aware at a previous city council meeting of an issue with an elderly resident who in obtaining a resident pass was not able to obtain a resident pass because she did not have a smartphone or access to a computer. She ran into a roadblock at the parking department because the staff person was not familiar with how to register residents in the new system. The problem was addressed the next day and the resident received her pass and the policy was made available to the staff at the parking office. New systems of any type go through a transition process and this new parking system is no different. Not only was all the resident information transferred over, but over 15,000 tickets, both paid and unpaid, were also transferred to the new system in order to retain that data. There will be hiccups and more will be uncovered that will need to be addressed in the new policies, but I trust that the department will adjust and move forward. The transition will take until the end of next June because the, of the rolling registration for resident parking permits. During that time, enforcement will be a hybrid plate reader and visual inspection for resident parking sticker and hang tag visitor passes. Enforcement by the Department of Transportation will be from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday and noon to 6 p.m. on Sunday. In the off hours, the police department will be doing enforcement. They're looking into using their current plate readers with this new system, and the desk personnel will be able to enter the, a plate to check on the parking status. Again, the language in front of us in the ordinance was focused on the fees, the zones, and the streets involved. Since these were public meetings, and since we as counselors are the front line in communicating the changes to, the, to our constituents, it is important that we talk through the policies around enforcement and registration. But we were not creating policy. That's the job for the Department of Transportation. The committee had early consensus on the zones and streets, including the seasonal enforcement of streets in the willows. The larger areas of discussion were around the proposal for visitor permits and the fees for permits. The original plan was for a, visitor, for a visitor pass purchased by a resident to be made up of 46 packets of seven day visitor parking. This works well for those who visit for several days at a time, but it does not address a visitor who is there for only a few hours. More commonly, visitors stop by for dinner or to visit an elderly relative for a few hours. These short visits would use up a seven day packet with only one short visit. After discussion, the department changed the visitor pass to be use at will system. So the resident can now register a visitor on a visitor pass and the visitor will be legal until the resident removes them or, the reg or registers another visitor. Only one registration will be allowed at any time on a visitor pass. This allows for much more a much more flexible visitor pass and is analogous to giving a visitor a hang tag while they are at your home. The permit fees discussion was more frustrating in my mind. Acknowledging that the next year will be a learning curve for residents and for the department, I felt that we could compromise on the fees and accept a lower increase of $10 per resident permit and $5 for the seasonal resident permit. The committee landed on no fee changes at all, reflected in the current proposed language for the ordinance. Resident parking permit fee of $5, the first visitor per pass fee of $10, and the second at $20. And these fees are the same for year-round and seasonal permit holders. The committee agreed to set the fee for part-time residents with car, a car registered outside of Salem at $30. We also agreed to keep the college student fee at $10 and to set the fee for non-resident landlords at $50. Over the past few months, the council has approved increases to fees for the building department, fire department, electrical department, tour guides, and more. We have talked about the desire by this body to, to do more incremental changes to raise fees and not wait many years before making a larger change because it's easier on the residents. These fee increases were made because, because those pulling a permit should be responsible for the cost of delivering the, ser the service, not the taxpayer 
taxpayer. And we now know that the cost of delivering services for the building, electrical, and fire departments were much higher than the cost of the permit previously. We know that it is not right to place the burden of these services on the taxpayer. But in, the, in this case, it's not right for the residents of 82% of the streets in Salem to help cover the costs of the administration and enforcement of exclusive parking on 18% of the streets. Not even 18% of the residents, but 18% of the streets. And I would guess that it's lower than 18% of the residents. I will point out that this body passed an ordinance to charge businesses $1,000 per parking space for outdoor dining each year from May to early November. Surely the exclusive right to park in front of your home is worth more than $5 a year. The cost to administer the program is more than $5 a year, and the unwillingness to consider a compromise of $10, still a bargain, may be reflective of the fact that members most vocally against the $5 increase live in resident-only zones. I acknowledge that some members seem to be waiting for a legal decision from the Department of Revenue about whether the enforcement fines can and should be used to offset the cost of delivering the service for resident-only parking, even though it was explained several times that we can't rely on the income because with enforcement comes better behavior. And I will add that I have heard this over and over from many on the council. The best way to make the streets safer for pedestrians and all those to that use our streets is to have more and better enforcement. Once the word gets out, drivers will stop behaving badly. This is the argument. So why is this different? Why is this enforcement different? But let's continue. In the updated financial spreadsheet dated June 20th, the breakdown of expenses and revenue was presented with and without the addition of enforcement costs. Even removing enforcement, there is still a gap between the cost of providing the service for resident-only parking and the revenue brought in through permit fees. We need to be honest and careful when voting to increase some fees for others while not increasing fees for ourselves, even when justified by the data. At the council meeting in September, I will be presenting an order discussed in committee to meet with the director of the Department of Transportation to review the first six months of the use of the new permit, resident permit parking software and to look at any data already collected. Then again, at the one year mark, we'll have another meeting in order to determine if adjustments to the ordinance need to be made. And I want to take a minute to thank the committee and the counselors who attended the meetings to review the, and amend the ordinance. And I would also like to thank Dave Kaczarski and his department for answering our questions, investigating alternative ideas, and presenting three different financial views based on three different fee structure options. Any further discussion? Councilor Watson felt. Thank you, President Hapworth. Um, I just a couple comments here. I I first want to thank Councilor Marcillo and Chair of Ola. Um, it, for her organized uh, assessment and accurate transparency of our conversation for all those who had not been listening in. Incredible summary. Thank you very much for, for uh, I think, catching every single aspect of that extremely complex conversation. Um, I think the question, um, I, I was in support of, of not increasing the current resident fees at this time. And I want to be really clear that it is at this time of transition and change. I think ultimately, as a completely separate conversation from the cost of the new program, the cost of the old program, what we're including, what we're not including, any one of us who has ever purchased anything in our lives know that we understand what we are willing to pay for something um, and what we are not willing to pay for something. And the question remains and does need to be answered, is $5 a sufficient price point for exclusive parking access? I do want to amend one comment or made additional comment on um, something that Councilor Marcillo said. I do have to take issue as the Ward 2 Councilor with the description that this is about exclusive parking outside one's home. There are plenty of resident only streets in this city, um, specifically in Ward 2, where even with resident only parking protection, they are not parking outside their own home. They are parking within a two block radius in some instances. So 
so there is a, a, a there are differences and nuances to this conversation. There are parts of this city that do need a protection because otherwise people would be parking a quarter mile, half mile away, right? There are density components to this conversation. That having been said, I also acknowledge that the most vocal um, opponents to raising um, uh, the price are from resident only parking areas where it is much easier to access parking um, closer to your home. So I, I acknowledge the comment, but I had to um, just add a little, a little bit more color there because I also represent folks who would be adversely affected by the removal of any kind of protection program. That having been said, again, the question remains, is $5 sufficient? I think, you know, I, I would, I quote uh, Councillor Stott, it's the bargain of the century. So it does need to be addressed. Um, it does need to be brought back around again and the public can expect that it will. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Stott. Thank you, President Hapworth. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, the Chair of OLA for the um, robust conversation and discussion, for the willingness to even hold this conversation. I know this is my third term, uh, term on Council, and this conversation doesn't even come up in, in committee as thoroughly as it did because it's a tough nut to tackle and crack. Um, so I appreciate your your willingness to do that and to have this conversation. That said, I am upset that there's really not many changes coming out. Um, I appreciate the change to zones. I think we all understand the simplification of that and making the zones make more sense for neighborhoods, et cetera. Um, the additional language around the software changes and whether it's a permit pass or a tax etc. Um, but that's really it. We are not changing the resident parking program, in, in my opinion. We just had seven hours of conversation to change some lines on a map to, to have them make some more sense. So I would like to make a motion to amend what is in front of us, section 75D, sec, uh, the first paragraph. I would like to change $5 to $10. And in this, when it comes to resident passes, and for the second paragraph, I would like to make a motion to amend the visitor passes, the first one from $10 to $15, and the second visitor pass from $20 to $30. Second. So the motion from uh, Councillor Stott to amend uh, Section 75D uh, resident passes from $5 to $10, visitor passes from $10 to $15, and the additional visitor pass from $20 to $30. Is that, did I have that correct? Uh, seconded by Councillor Varela, uh, under discussion. Councillor Stott. Thank you, President Hapworth. So um, it was discussed many times, and I actually thought it was gonna come from committee that we might find a middle ground here. I do agree that the proposed changes from the traffic department were, abrupt or, or kind of jarring, but we've, we've seen a lot of that because we're doing a lot of cleanup from fees not being raised and from those that have sat in these seats before saying, we'll take care of it down the road. I don't wanna say that today, I'd rather take care of it right now um, and make sure we have an incremental change to something that we know is the bargain of the century um, or, or the city. I won't be that extreme with it, but $5 is quite the deal. Um, so while it was kind of discussed and batted around, nobody actually made a motion to or did the math or, or numbered it out. So I took the liberty to take the worksheet from the traffic department or <laughs> transportation department and pencil out the revenue numbers using their same models that they did with their proposed changes. So with our current revenue, which we have in front of us, because there are no amendments to the current fees, which, by the way, to Councillor Marcillo's point about how many residences have passes, it's 2,059. We're a city of 45,000, so just that for perspective, talking about 2,000 resident passes. So our current revenue is 45,500. The transportation department proposed fees were 145,000. This does not include tickets. This is just straight um, it, revenue from the permit process. 
um, with my proposed amendments, so the $10, $15, and $30, including the new $10 October visitor residential uh, price that we just passed, or for the first time, it would go from a total annual fee of 40, or revenues from 45,000 to 75,000. Um, the ones proposed to us in committee went from 45,000 to 145,000. So I do feel this is a decent middle ground. We are still in a shortfall of about a $130,000 that's excluding enforcement. Um, when you include enforcement, we're at a shortfall of close to 200,000, so 193,000. Um, actually, I want to double check my math on that one. So yeah, I, I think this is a middle ground here. Um, it's I don't think it's anything jarring when you look at the other cities and towns near us, which I know we don't price our, our, our program based on what others are doing, but when you do look at them, it ranges from zero in Lynn to Boston to you know 30 in Everett or, or Somerville. I wrote them down, so please don't quote me here because I'm just kind of going off the cuff. Let's see, Everett was 10. They also had a tiered visitor pass, so $5 for a one-day visitor pass, up to $25 for a 30 visitor pass. Chelsea was $10, visitors were 10, Somerville was 40, visitors were 20 and 40. So the reason I'm bringing those up, it's not because that's not that's what we should do, but I'm bringing it up because everybody's different, everybody has their own program, everybody has their own expenses and requirements, and also everyone has their own purpose for a residential parking program. I believe after listening to seven hours of OLA, our purpose of the residential parking program is for residents to have a fair chance to park in front of their home. It's not for visitors and contractors to have unlimited access and parking as well. It's not for businesses to have their customers have parking in those spots. So if we stick to that core requirement and core goal right there, I think that that makes sense and is fair. Councilor Merkel. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. I also want to echo the thank you uh, for all the work that was done uh, by Councilor Masillo and, and uh, the committee and uh, the Transportation Department. Uh, it, it was because this isn't something that, you know, has been unpacked to this degree, and uh, I appreciate it very much. Uh, I also don't see why we would wait to raise the fee. We're, if, if we're implementing a new system and trying to get more, uh, you know, you know um, more enforcement. Uh, I, as was stated, it's 18% of the streets, so this is not a program that's available to everyone, even people that don't have uh, parking, their visitors can't park, so I think it should be self-supporting. Uh, so I would vote in favor. I think these are modest increases, which is what I want to see. Another point that Councilor Masillo said, when, you know, fees are something as low in 5 and $10, time goes by, uh, then there's, you know, the lengthy meetings are avoided to unpack all this, and then years go by, and then we have to have large fees, and that's just not best financial practice. Uh, so again, I, I don't see why we would wait for these modest increases. Uh, I do have a question for clarity. You had said the increase to 10 for the resident and the first visitor parking, the second visitor parking. Would you be changing the seasonal parking of $5? I had that question for clarity, but yes, I would those, support those at home that the answer was no. Okay. No, no change to no change to uh, to the seasonal. Thank you. Further discussion. Councilor Jerzlo. Thank you, President Hapworth. Um, I'm not in favor of raising the fees. This past weekend, there was a large event down the Willows, and we saw no enforcement whatsoever. So you want to you want to raise the fee, but we're not seeing any type of enforcement. <laughs> and for this program as it is. So what are we going to get if you're raising the fees? And it's not it's not a privilege to be parking in front of your house. Everybody pays excise tax it's when you have a car. So everybody keeps talking about personal storage space in front of your house to park your car. We all, if we own a car, you pay excise tax and that allows you to keep your car on the street. So it's not a privilege. We should be able to park in front of our homes or close to our homes without paying for anything. There's a lot of different programs within the city 
that we all pay as taxpayers, but not everybody uses. Not everybody uses the bike lanes. They had to um, put all that money into bike lanes in the city, and they had to buy a large piece of equipment for the winter time to shovel these um, bike lanes out. Not everybody uses the bike lanes, so why are we keep going back to not everybody uses um, resident parking? There's a lot of different programs in the city that not everybody uses, but we all pay for. So let's be fair about this. I think there should be no fees in the resident parking. No fees whatsoever. That is my opinion. Um, I think we all pay enough taxes and they go up every year and we have to pay for more and more and we don't get as many services. So I think this is wrong to raise the fees. I think there should be no fees. Thank you. Further discussion? Councilor Watson felt. <coughs> And Councillor Harvey. Thank you, President Hapworth. Um, point of clarification for Councillor Jerzolo, the difference between a bike lane and restricted parking is that anyone can use a bike lane. It is wide open for all use, for people who live in this town and pay taxes and people who don't. It is wide open. Anyone with any kind of mobility can choose to use any bike lane. That is not the case for restricted parking in resident-only zones. Only people who have a pass and who qualify for that pass are allowed to park there. So, so that is the distinct difference in the two programs. Anyone can use a bike lane. Not everyone can park in resident parking. So just saying that. Now, moving on. Uh, for myself, you know, in council, uh, in our committee meeting, the conversation was about not, not charging. It was very specific. Some fo folks did believe that, right, as, as we've heard already from Councilor Gerzlo. For my part, I felt, and I think, I don't want to speak for Councilor Hapworth, but, but Mr. President, I, this is what I recall you're saying as well, um, which is that this is a period of change, and we are not yet seeing the behavioral changes, either from enforcement on the parking or the parking itself, to sort of double down on the effect and impact of the change on those folks at this time. Now, I can be convinced. I was ready to do it incrementally as well, and uh, if it's the will of the body, you know, I'm I'm happy to to actually vote for that that minor increase. I you know I I understand that doubling down on the impact of change can be very difficult for folks, um, and I do want to restate something else that came up in in those public meetings is that if you have a hardship, you are able to call the parking department and discuss your hardship with them as well. So if you have a financial barrier to a five dollar increase on an annual basis, going from five to ten, if you are you know a senior citizen, for example, on a, on a restricted income, you can call the city and you can have that conversation and that there is a way to make sure that, that the impact is, is um, able to be adopted by you personally. So I think with that, I'm willing to say, you know, at this time, why wait? I think, you know, $5 is $5, and I'm happy to support it at this time. Frankly, maybe we, in another year and a half or so, we take it up again. We should see what we think this program is worth. Thank you. Councilor Harvey. Any further discussion? Councilor Prosniewski. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, we're talking about this as a benefit, like it's something extra for the people who live in uh, residential areas. They have to, they're, they're getting this big bonus because they're getting a private space in front of their house. Um, you know, I think we're, we're looking at it from, from different glasses. The, the, the city's success, we, we've become vict victims of the city's success in certain neighborhoods in this city. Certain neighborhoods have become more popular. There's been more tourist attractions in different parts of the cities, and there are different re different residential areas around these places that have found it impossible to park without uh, resident parking. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to park in front of their places at all, especially like in the Derby Street area and a lot of the areas surrounding the downtown area. Um, that's not the fault of the residents into the city that's the city's that's the city growing and that's that's the growing pains that, that we have to accept um, first I want to thank um Jim Rosillo for a very deep dive into this who did a lot of homework and had a lot of work to do this and and I uh, 
I agree that uh, revamping this is something that has to be done because um, a lot of the citizens in the, sale, in the city are, uh, are suffering from just what we're talking about. Um, I think the, uh, I am not for a pit, for an increase. I think uh, Chair Morcillo's idea that we do a six month reval um, and then decide whether or not this is a burden and something that we should address in six months is, is, is more uh, palatable. I think by then we'll also find out what kind of monies uh, that we can generate from, from the increase, where they can go, whether they can pay for it so that the residents don't uh, absorb the increase. And the June deadline gives us uh, nearly a year to, uh, to take a look at uh, what, what we've all done. So at this point, I just think that we should take baby steps. But please don't make it look like the people who live in these areas are somewhere different than, than um, uh, uh, are getting more benefits. It's not their fault that they have to live, in, that they're living in an area uh, that's um, residential parking. That's because we as a city have grown and this is what it's become. And they're actually victims, not benefactors of this program. Thank you. Councilor Merkel. Uh, thank you, President Hapworth. Uh, I'd also like to just follow up and make the point uh, that residents that are also, um, you know, victim to Salem's success and uh, can't have visitors come visit them in Salem uh, don't have access to this program, you know, including uh, where I live and my neighbors. Um, I can't have visitors from out of town on, on, a, on a Saturday uh, because there's nowhere for them to park. I have to tell them they have to come by 8 a.m. Or I'll have, even when it's not October, uh, I'll, it will just be a regular weekday. You know, I'll have elderly friends coming from the next town to visit me for lunch. And they'll not only pay, but they'll have to walk several blocks because there's no parking near me in 90 degree heat. So it's, it's I also support there being a fee because uh, this doesn't work for everyone that lives somewhere that is struggling because of our crowds and lack of parking. So I, I just wanted to make that, that difference, that, point out that difference. Thank you. Further discussion? I see none. Um, I believe it's three hands for a roll call vote. Is that correct? I think we would need a roll call vote here. I'd like to have just on the amendment, yeah. Yeah, but could, could we do a roll call vote on the amendment? Sure. Yeah, so I'm, I'm saying that I, I believe we're uh, nearly 50-50. When it comes to the as-amended Yeah, I get you. I get you. I'm saying... Yeah. No, com completely. Can we have a roll call vote on the amendments, the motion that I have? That's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying this, this, this specific amendment, I think, is close to potentially close to 50-50 based on people who spoke. So I just wanted to uh, get a roll call on that. Um, so um, on, are we all clear on what we're voting on here? Uh, Councilor Jerzel, sorry. Thank you, President. Um, could you repeat the amendment, what we're voting on? Yep, so the amendment right now is from Councilor Stott. It's to amend 75D and to move uh, $5 to $10 for residents, $10 to $15 for visitors, and $20 to $30 for uh, the additional visitor. Councillor Morcillo. Say again. Okay. Three hands for the roll call vote? Okay. So on the, uh, on the amendment from Councillor Stott, Madam City Clerk, when you're ready, please call the roll. Councillor Davis. Yes. Councillor Harvey. No. Councillor Jerslow. No. Councillor Merkel. Yes. Councillor Marcillo. Yes. Councillor Prosnewski. No. Councillor Stott. Yes. Councillor Varela. Yes. Councillor Watson Felt. Yes. Councillor Hapworth. Yes.
on the amendment from Councillor Stott for resident sticker uh, parking, <laughs> sticker amendment on increasing fees from $5 to $10 for residents, $10 to $15 on the first visitor pass, and $20 to $30 for the second visitor pass. We have 10 councillors voting, uh, seven in favor, three opposed, and one absent. The amendment carries. Um, back to the main motion. Any further discussion on that motion? Um, okay, so on the, um, I guess we'll take, maybe we don't need three hands on this one then. Um, so on the, uh, on acceptance of the on adoption for first passage as, amend, uh, as amended for the resident sticker parking, all those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. And I'll just add uh, thank you to Council Marcello also for the hard work on that. That's that's many, many, many hours in a very emotional topic. Uh, further unfinished business. Councilor Merkel. We have the second passage of a bond order in the amount of $200,000 to pay a portion of the costs for improvements at the intersection of Jefferson Avenue and Wilson Street. Councilor Merkel. Thank you, uh, President Hapworth. I move for adoption for second passage by roll call vote. Councilor Merkel moves for adoption for second passage by roll call vote. Any discussion? Uh, thank you, President Hapert. Uh, as I said two weeks ago, uh, quickly, this is a reallocation of bond premium funds from unspent bond proceeds from 2019 for the Jefferson Bridge design to the Jefferson Wilson intersection project underway this summer. And this was prompted by Anna Friedman's uh, cleanup efforts, which are very much appreciated. Uh, we've been sitting on these uh, funds on year Used, and the mayor has requested they go to the Jefferson Wilson intersection project. Uh, that's a priority for the city and the public, and it's a perfect use for these funds. Any further discussion? Council Marcello. Thank you, President. I, I just need to take another opportunity to explain to residents that the project is only half complete um, when the light comes in, which is scheduled for September at this point. Um, the, the light will be installed, the road will be repaved at that intersection, it will be repainted, the stop line for the northbound lanes of Jefferson Avenue approaching Wilson Street will be stopped before the intersection, which will give, will give plenty of room for those trying to make that right turn from Wilson to Jefferson. Um, they'll have much more room to do that. I understand right now that it is an issue. People need to wait a little bit longer to have a clear turn if they feel like they they can't get their vehicle through that intersection safely. Um, but like I said, it's only a partial implementation of this safety um, issue. I know that some people are, would like to redo the curbing there to make it easier on, on vehicles, but that defeats the purpose of the safety issues. We're trying to make it safety, safer for pedestrians. We've had a death in that area. We've had two people, two pedestrians hit just a couple of weeks ago. It's a, it's a tight area, and with the new light and with the new painting, that intersection will be much safer for those trying to, to make that turn. So I just want to get that out there again. Um, and I also want to say that we are also working on some traffic calming in some of those those side streets um, for in anticipation of cars trying to avoid the light and taking the, the side streets to get around that. Um, thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, on second passage of a bond order in the amount of $200,000 to pay a portion of costs for improvements at the intersection of Jefferson and Wilson Street. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Council Davis? Yes. Council Harvey? Yes. Council Jerslow? Yes. Council Marco? Yes. Council Marcillo? Yes. Council Prosnuski? Yes. Council Stott? Yes. Council Varela? Yes. Council Watson Felt? Yes. And Council Hapworth? Yes. On second passage of a bond order in the amount of $200,000 to pay the portion of costs for improvements at the intersection of Jefferson and Wilson. We have 10 councilors voting, 10 in favor, none opposed, and one absent. The matter carried. Further unfinished business. We have a second passage of an ordinance amending an ordinance relative to Chapter 36, Section 4, pickup of large item fees. Council Morsillo. 
I move for adoption for second and final passage. Council Morso moves for adoption for second and final passage. Any discussion? Just to remind the councilors, this is to change the fees for the pickup of mattresses or box springs to $50 each and for other large items to $18.73. The, the price for the large fees of $18.73 is by contract, which is which in this contract with um, with waste management, it increases 2.5% each year. So that's how we get that rather odd number. And so these numbers will be um, updated each year as the contract changes. Any further discussion? Councillor Watsonfeld. Thank you. Another, uh, I, you know, I said this the last time, I'm going to say it again, another plea to the public. If you feel as though you are unable to pay the cost of the $50 for the mattress and a box spring, please call the city of Salem and discuss your financial hardship. Um, what I don't want to see happening is an increase in dumping of mattresses and box springs around the downtown and all over our city, especially in our woods, where folks think it's okay to just dump and uh, run when they're moving out of spaces. So um, please, please just communicate with the city. Um, they are likely able to help you if you need it. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, on second passage of an ordinance, amending an ordinance relative to Chapter 36, Section 4, pick up large item fees. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Oh, sorry. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Further unfinished business. We have a second passage of an ordinance amending an ordinance relative to traffic chapter 42, section 75, article 5A, number of temporary reserved rooftop parking spaces. Councilor Morsell. Thank you, President. I move for adoption for second and final passage. Councilor Morsell moves for adoption for second and final passage. Any discussion? Just again to remind the councilors, this is a change in the museum place mall. The reserved spaces will be decreased to 50, um, and this is to address the issue of them not being utilized so we'll see how this goes any further discussion seeing none on second passage of an ordinance amending an ordinance relative to cha traffic chapter 42 section 75 article 5a number of temporary reserved rooftop parking spaces all those in favor any opposed matter carries Further unfinished business. We have the second passage of an ordinance amending an ordinance relative to Chapter 4 advertising section 4 51 subsection A 4C by deleting 18 feet and replacing with 5 feet. Councilor Varela. Thank you, President Hapworth. I move for a second and final passage. Councilor Varela moves for second and final passage. Any discussion? I'll be brief about my discussion. Uh, this is just to help the smallest of our businesses to have an even playing field when it comes to lateral signs. So thank you, everybody. Any further discussion? Seeing none, on uh, second passage an ordinance, amending an ordinance relative to advertising. All those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Further unfinished business. We have note that sorry, I'll note that Council Royal has recused himself. Are we recused himself? Or? Okay. Second passage of an ordinance amending an ordinance relative to Chapter 2, Section 112, Licensing Board. Council Morsillo. Thank you, President. I move for adoption for second and final passage. Council Morsillo moves for adoption for second and final passage. Any discussion? This is the change to um, the way the way the things are advertised and sent out to abutting residents. Any further discussion? Seeing none. On second passage of an ordinance, uh, amending an ordinance relative to the licensing board, all those in favor? Any opposed? Matter carries. Councilor Prosniewski. I'll note that Councilor Varela has rejoined us. Councilor Prosniewski. I move that this meeting be adjourned. Councilor Prosniewski moves for adjournment. All those in favor? Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all. See you in August. Yeah.